Dear learners and listeners, Namaskar. I am Dr. Shweta and I am here with you on the new topic which is Adolescence and its Challenges. Human life completes its journey through various stages and one of the most vital stage is Adolescence. Adolescence is a period of transition from childhood to adulthood and plays a decisive role in the formation of pro-social or anti-social adult. All of us undergo this stage which poses many challenges and it's full of excitement. At the same time, it demands adjustments on many fronts. When we come to this world, we are completely dependent upon others and learn gradually to be independent. In India, the adolescents do most of the work themselves, but the final decision regarding various domains of life is taken by their parents. For example, an adolescent wishes to enjoy movies, but parents may force him or her to complete study first. Parents claim that they have more practical knowledge and experience and tend to treat adolescents like children. The introduction makes it clear that we are going to discuss about the adolescent and the various challenges that it brings with it. Based on this, the objectives of today's program are going to be to explain the nature of adolescence as a developmental stage, to enlist the developmental tasks encountered during adolescence, to explain the physical development during adolescence and to discuss the gender roles and also describe the phenomena of generation gap. First of all, we must understand what is adolescence. It is actually a period of transition when the individual changes and the individual changes physically as well as psychologically from a child to an adult that is this is called transition when one is changing from one phase of life to another phase of life. It is a period when rapid physiological and psychological changes demand for new social roles to take place. The adolescents due to these changes often face a number of crises and dilemmas that is who, what, when, where, why, how. They do not understand that what do they do, how do they do, where do they do that. It is the period when the child moves from dependency to autonomy. It demands significant adjustment to the physical and social changes. The adolescence period in the Indian social system comes under Brahmacharya. This is the first ashram of developmental stage. In this, the child learns the basic skills in relation to one's future role as a responsible adult. All living beings pass through specific stages or phases of life. Erickson believed that each stage of life is marked by a specific crisis or conflict between competing tendencies. Only if the individuals negotiate each of these hurdles successfully, they can develop in a normal and healthy manner. During this phase, Adolescent must integrate various roles into a consistent self-identity. If they fail to do so, they may experience confusion over who they are. Indeed, adolescence represents one of the greatest of these periods of crisis. It is the stage of stress, strain and storm. It brings many ambiguities in life. During this phase, one really does not know where he or she stands. It is believed that this uncertainty about one's role causes many conflicts. It has been seen that delinquency rates soar during the period of adolescence, that suicides become increasingly prevalent, that drug and alcohol addiction may have their beginning and that much general happiness exists during this phase of life. Adolescence is also a period when satisfactory heterosexual adjustments are facilitated or hindered, when career is planned and philosophies of life are molded. We must understand if adolescence is biological or social. It is actually both. The beginning of adolescence is marked by biological changes in girls as well as in boys. Just before puberty, there occurs what is known as pre-adolescent growth spurt. It takes place in girls mostly during the age of 9 to 12 years and in boys between 11 and 14 years of age. Adolescence for both girls and boys is marked largely by the social changes. Such factors as when an adolescent leaves home, gets a job and can vote 
determine when his or her transition from childhood to adulthood is accomplished. The length of this period is thus primarily a social phenomena. The problems adolescents face during the long period of growing up have both biological and social roots. Physical changes and deviations can create many problems. Society also creates problems for adolescents. Adolescents in Western societies behave differently than adolescents in Eastern society. Owing to varying social norms, expectations and family structure. Let us now understand about the factors that determine the pattern of transition. That is how the transition takes place from childhood to adolescence. Optimal development in adolescence depends on successful accomplishment of the developmental tasks in infancy and childhood. Developmental tasks as we all know are the expectations for a particular period. There is also a period of transition that takes place at a very rapid pace in adolescence. Degree of dependency also changes for adolescents. That is, how dependent the young adolescent will be is determined mainly by the kind of training he or she received during childhood. Adolescents also faces conflicting demands from others around them like the parents, teachers, community, etc. They are also concerned about their future life. That is, the adolescent goes through a period of wondering how he or she will meet the new problems, the life present. So long as this feeling of insecurity exists, there will be little motivation to make the transition in adulthood. As the barriers to growing up are lowered or removed by parents, teachers, and society, the adolescents can move smoothly in the direction of reaching the goal of adulthood and motivation to make the transition. As of now, we have discussed about the factors determining the development in adolescence. Now, let us also talk about the developmental task. The term developmental task refers to those problems that individuals typically face at different periods during their life. An infant or a small child must learn to walk, talk and control the elimination of waste products of the body. That is, this is the developmental task for an infant. In the same manner, in the middle childhood, such skills as learning to play games and learning to read become of major importance. The developmental task for adolescents present the vital problems which must be met and solved during the transition from childhood to adulthood. These problems must be solved if adolescents expects to achieve a successful adult role. Now let us come up to the developmental tasks for adolescents. Let us understand that what are adolescents expected to do. He having guessed has mentioned certain developmental tasks for the adolescent. Number one, the developmental task for adolescents is achieving new and more mature relations with age mates of both sexes. Number two, achieving a masculine or a feminine social role. Number three, accepting one's physique and using the body effectively. Number four, achieving emotional independence of parents and other adults. Next is to achieve assurance of economic independence. Another comes that it is also important for the adolescent according to having us to select and prepare for an occupation. Next comes to make preparation for marriage and family life. Developing intellectual skills and concepts necessary for civic competence also comes under one of the developmental tasks mentioned by having us. Another is desiring and achieving socially responsible behavior. Then comes acquiring a set of values and an ethical system as a guide to behavior. These are some of the developmental tasks that Hevingerst has proposed for the adolescents. Let us also discuss about the physical development during adolescent. Adolescence is fundamentally a period of physical change. The young person's reactions to physical changes may range from pride and pleasant expectations to bewilderment and fear. One of the most characteristic features of adolescence is the increase in size, that is, in the height and in weight. Bodily proportions also undergo changes. The facial features alter because 
the growth of the lower part of the face lags behind the growth of the upper part. Legs proportionally usually grow more rapidly than the body stem and hands and feet anticipate by several years of the total body size of their owner. Following closely on the heels of accelerated growth, the pituitary gland directs the adrenal cortex and the gonads into more activity. Prior to this time, virtually equal amount of androgenic that is male and estrogenic that is female hormones are produced for both sexes by the adrenal cortex on the direction of anterior pituitary gland. Now, an increased amount of hormonal production differentiates the sexes. The males producing more androgens, the females more estrogen. Sex hormones are actually the substances secreted by the gonads for reproductive functions and determination of secondary sex characteristics. For example, estrogen in female and testosterone in male. Testosterone is the male sex hormone responsible for the development of male secondary sexual characteristics as they become sexually mature. While in the female body, this role is played by estrogen. In girls, the enlargement of breast is followed by the growth of pubic hair, the menac and the axillary hair. In boys, after the initial enlargement of the testes, there occurs pubic hair, axillary hair, voice changes and beard in that order. Physical development, as mentioned above, presents only the gross picture of the changes that occur in adolescence. Even more significant, perhaps, are the growth patterns of strength and skill. The post-pubescent boy will almost certainly be stronger and will likely to have greater agility, motor coordination and bodily skills. The accelerated production of male hormone brings with it added muscular strength. The nature of the skeletal growth, increased shoulder, breadth, bigger chest cavity, and finally, the greater lung size, heart size and increased blood pressure are all favorable conditions for greater physical strength. While many of these same changes occur among girls, their physical strength increases at a slower rate and of course never equals that of males. This was all about the physical growth. Let us now also discuss about the gender roles during adolescence. Gender roles. Gender is a much more complex term. We all know that. It relates to a given society's belief about the traits and behaviors which supposedly are the characteristics of males and females. That is what a male is expected to do and what a female is expected to do comes under the gender roles. Gender roles refer to the expectations concerning the roles males and females should perform and the ways they should behave. Such expectations come into play as soon as a child is born. The beliefs about gender roles continue to influence us and our behavior throughout life. Children's recognition that they belong to one sex or the other is called gender identity. And this gender identity is actually established at a very early age. But by that time also, the boys and girls are uncertain as to whether they will always be a boy or a girl. It is not until they are about 6 or 7 that children acquire gender consistency. That is, the understanding that even if they adopted the clothing, hairstyle and behavior associated with the other sex, they would still retain their current sexual identity. That is, no matter if a girl wears jeans or if a boy wears skirts, this sexual identity is not going to change with regard to the clothing that they are wearing. So, dear learners, this was all about today's program. But before I end up, let us summarize that what we have discussed up till now. In today's program, first of all, we discuss that Adolescence is the period of transition between childhood to adulthood. Second, optimal development in adolescence depends on successful accomplishment of developmental tasks in infancy and childhood. Adolescence is fundamentally a period of physical and physiological change. Towards the end of childhood, girls at about 10 or 11 and boys at 12 or 13 
begin a period of rapid growth in height and weight. We also discussed in the end that gender roles refers to the expectations concerning the roles males and females should adopt and the ways they should behave. This was all about today's program. I hope you have understood the topic well. With this, I end up for today's program. Thank you.